This week in my CCNA class, we're covering the concepts of VLANs. And in class, I used Packet Tracer to demonstrate it. So right here, to start with, I've got these four PCs all connected to this switch, and everybody is in the same network. By default, a new switch, all switch ports, are in what's called VLAN 1, or the default VLAN. That means all of the switch ports are in a single broadcast domain. And that means that if a PC, like PC1 here, sends a broadcast, and we see it's sending a broadcast here, that that broadcast will go to every device on the switch ports because they're all in the same broadcast domain. So every device will see that broadcast. So this is the way it is, and this is fine if you only have one network and everybody needs to be on the same network and then everybody's in the same broadcast domain. However, this can lead to problems. For instance, a friend of mine had a network where he wanted to implement some greater security. He wanted a few of the devices on the network to be separated from the rest of the devices because they had sensitive information. But the way the network was set up was that you had a wireless router connected to a switch. And remember, all of the switch ports, all of the switch ports are in the same VLAN. So they're in the same VLAN 1 network, which means everybody's in the same broadcast domain. So that means that the computers with sensitive information can see the guest computers or the public computers that just entered the network for the day. And everybody, even the wireless users, are on the same network. In this situation, you have one network, one broadcast domain, and one VLAN, VLAN 1, which is the default VLAN on the switch. But if you want to have some separation, what we did was, to improve the network, is we created two networks. We created a VLAN 10 network and a VLAN 20 network. And if we pull these out here, you can kind of see how it worked. First of all, we bought a better wireless router, and the wireless router ends up having two IP addresses, one for one network and one for the other network. And we had a 10 network, and the router's 10.1. We have a 20 network, the router's 20.1, and VLAN 10 is for the 10 network, and VLAN 20 is for the 20 network. And then the switch ports on the switch we have to configure the switch and change the switch ports from all being in VLAN 1, where some of the switch ports are now going to be in VLAN 10, and then this switch port is in VLAN 20, and that adds some separation. And then it connects to the router. Now for the wireless users, we put an SSID for a green network, which connects to VLAN 20, and an SSID yellow, which connects to VLAN 10 and puts those users in this network. Now to make sure that the router doesn't automatically allow routing between the two networks, you can put firewall rules to constrain the communication between the two networks. But essentially you end up with a little bit greater security because you now have two separate networks, two separate broadcast domains, and broadcasts will stay in the network, and they shouldn't be able to see the devices in the other network. Now if we bring that concept over to the situation we had here, where all devices can see each other on the same network, it's because you have a single VLAN. So changing and adding some security to a switch, let's say you can only afford one switch, you have to have all your users plugged into the same switch, how do you put these PCs in a separate broadcast domain on the same switch? To do that, you have to configure VLANs. And so in this situation here, I want to put these two PCs in the 20 network in a separate VLAN from these two PCs. Now to do this, I'm going to need to create a VLAN 10 and put this switch port in VLAN 10. And I'll put this switch port in VLAN 10. And then I'll put this switch port in VLAN 20 and this switch port in VLAN 20. Now when it comes to VLANs, you can create, there's um, normal range VLANs go from VLAN 1 to 1005, and you can create and use any of those numbers for normal range VLANs. And you also have VLANs from 1006 to 4094, and those are extended range VLANs. And those VLANs, you need to do some other configurations to use extended range VLANs. So we're just going to create a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20, and then we'll put these switch ports in those VLANs. And then PC1, when it sends a broadcast, it won't go 
to these switch ports. In other words, these users won't see that broadcast. So to do that, we open up the switch and we go into global config mode by typing enable and then configure terminal. And then you just type VLAN 10 and that creates VLAN 10. You can give it a name and give it the name, let's say student for student network. And then VLAN 20, you could say, and then we'll give that a name. We'll say the VLAN 20 is for a different group. We'll say faculty. So we have a VLAN 10 named for students and a VLAN 20 with the name faculty. So we have our two separate VLANs. Now, if we do a control C and look at our VLANs, we say show VLAN brief. We can see how our VLANs are organized right now. We just created two VLANs. Let's take a look at them. So right here, show VLAN brief. There was my command, whoops. So show VLAN brief. There's my command, and you can see the result here. VLAN 1, this is the default VLAN, it's named default, it's active, and currently all of the switch ports right here are in VLAN 1. And then here's VLAN 10, which we just created, but none of the switch ports are in VLAN 10, they're all in VLAN 1. And there's VLAN 20 for faculty, and you can see it's active, but none of the ports are in there. And then you have legacy VLANs that you also can't delete. 1002 for FDDI, 1003 for token ring, and then FDDI and token ring also. So these are default legacy VLANs that you can't delete. So these are the normal range VLANs, 1 to 1005. You can't delete VLAN 1 and you can't delete 1002 to 1005, but you can create VLANs and add VLANs to the switch between these other numbers. Extended range VLANs is another topic and we won't go into that, but um, but you can also, like internet service providers, if they need more VLANs, which oftentimes they do, they can go all the way up to 4,094 VLANs if they use extended range VLANs. So what we want to do now that we have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 is put the ports in VLAN 10 and 20. Now to do this, I'm going to turn on the um, preferences and show the port labels so we can see what ports they are. So yes, this port is port 10 and 20, and this is port 1 and port 5. So we're going to put port 1 and 5 in VLAN 10, and we'll put port 10 and 15, switch port 10 and 15 in VLAN 20. So I'll go into the switch again. We'll stretch this out. And we'll go into global config mode, interface F0 slash 1. That's our switch port one, and we'll say switch port mode, and I'll type out the whole command, switch port mode access. We turn the switch port into an access port, which is designed for just a single VLAN. Right now it's in dynamic auto mode, which allows it to automatically switch from an access port to a trunk port. But by doing this command, we statically configure it to only being an access port in a single VLAN. We'll talk about trunks later. So then the next command is sw switch port access VLAN 10. And now port one is in VLAN 10. Then I will up arrow, go back to this command and change it from port one to port five, hit enter and then up arrow and enter the same commands to put the same configuration and put switch port 5 into VLAN 10. So now those two ports are in VLAN 10. They're no longer in the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. Now, to put the other ports, 10 and 15, I'm going to use a different command. This time, I'm going to use the interface range command. So I can type, instead of int, I used the full command interface. But if I wanted to, I could shorten it to just int. So int range, and now I can put in a range of interfaces. So I put f0 slash 10, fast ethernet switch port 10, dash 15. And by hitting enter, this lets me configure ports 10 through 15. So I can configure 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 
and then I'll put in these commands. Now this time I'll put in command shortening. Instead of switch port, I'll just type SW mode access and then SW access VLAN 20. And now ports 10 through 15 are in VLAN 20. So if we go back to the switch, you can see the switch ports are have new information. So they're reloading or relearning their status here. And I'll fast forward time. No, actually what I'll do is I'll go to real time mode, fast forward time, and then I'll go back to simulation mode and we'll run a ping test again. This time the PC will ping the 10 network. So it's going to ping 192.168.10.255. This will be a broadcast because it's going to the broadcast address. So we'll queue that up and then we'll see where it goes. There goes the broadcast. Now this time notice it only goes to the switch port that's in VLAN 10 because it's this is the broadcast domain now. The ports 1 and port 5 are in the same broadcast domain. They're in the VLAN 10 broadcast domain. So they're isolated to that broadcast domain. So similarly, these two PCs, they can speak to each other because they're in VLAN 20, but any broadcasts will stay in the switch ports that are in VLAN 20, meaning ports 10 through 15. So in the next video, we're going to learn more about the different types of VLANs, the different types of VLANs there are. We've talked in this video about the default VLAN, but there's other types of VLANs that have different types of purposes. Some of those are technical VLANs that are built into the system, and other ones are just VLANs that serve different purposes.